song number 82. Song number 82. Let us pray. Ancient of days, we thank you, the Lord of heaven and earth. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you because you are the Lord, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Father, the understanding one, the merciful one, the lover of our souls, bishop and shepherd of our souls, be thou magnified. Thank you very much. Because of what 
you have already done. Thank you because of having helped us all these years. Lord, thank you because over the nearly 47 solid years, thou hast not disappointed me. And there are those that have put 30 years, and there are those that have put 10 years, and there are those that have put 20 something years. Thank you for everybody that you are brought into your kingdom. Lord, you have not brought us for nothing. You've not brought us for formality. You brought us for some real business, real relationship. Lord, I pray right relationship should be progressed even as we hear your word. Let it impact everybody. Let it be an eye-opener to the intent and we might benefit from your incomparable and, and uh, indisputable resources. Unquantifiable resources. Thank you, Lord. May it be so for each and every person that is going to listen to what we have to say at this point in time. And I believe that it is so. Holy Spirit, divine, have your way in the midst of your people. Thank you for answer to prayers, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. And amen. amen. I have a short exhortation The theme is, is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? Our text is Jeremiah chapter 8. Jeremiah chapter 8. We're reading from verse 18. This portion of scriptures of the prophecy, in other words, of Jeremiah, the prophet, is a lament of the prophet for Judah. We're going to show why toward the end of this uh, chapter, he made this lamentation and said from verse 18, when I would comfort myself against sorrow, my heart is faint in me. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have 
They provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the heart of the daughter of my people, I am hot, I am black, that is, I am mourning. Astonishment has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? That is restored. Why then is not the hurt of the daughter of my people restored? Like I have said, it was Jeremiah's lamentation. We need to know something about the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah was called into ministry in his youth from the priest city of Anathot. Jeremiah was a heartbroken prophet with a heartbreaking message. Jeremiah labored for more than 40 years proclaiming a message of doom to the stiff-necked people of Judah and was highly despised and persecuted by his countrymen for his work. In this chapter 8, Jeremiah continues to show the land of Judah, the imminent judgment that was coming. If you read from verse 4, and we are going to read from verse 4 of Jeremiah chapter 8. This is subtitled, Judah's Judgment Imminent. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus said the Lord, shall they fall and not arise? Shall they turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slid them back by a perpetual backsliding? They hold fast deceit. They refused to return, hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his cause, his own way, as a horse rushed into the battle. Yeah. The stock in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, times of migration. And the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. How do we say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain. Made he it, the pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken low. They have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fees to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the 
least even unto the greatest is given to covetousness. From the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. For they have healed the heart of the daughter of my people slightly. That is superficially. Saying, peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? No. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. That is, couldn't be ashamed or feel embarrassed. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation, the time of their punishment. It shall be cast down, said the Lord. I will surely consume them, said the Lord. There shall be no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaf shall fade. And uh, the things that I have given them shall pass away from them. Why do we still sit still, assemble yourselves, and let us enter into the defense cities, and let us be silent there? For the Lord God, Lord our God, had put us in silence and given us water of God to drink, because we have sinned against the Lord. We look for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. There's nothing that is a loud noise from the nostrils of the horses of war was heard from Dan. And whole, the whole land trembled at the sound of the name of his strong ones. For they are come and have devoured the land and all that is in it, the city, and those that dwell therein. For behold, I will send serpents, cockatrices among you, which will be, which will not be shamed, and they shall bite you, said the Lord. Then look up to me after extreme all the the troubles that the sins of the people are about to bring to them, the punishment that was to come. And then now he began to mourn and began to lament. And then in his lamentation, for us to understand it very well, I'm going to read it from a Bible that has a softer English language, as it were. Jeremiah chapter 8. Let me read from this other rendering. Jeremiah chapter 8, and uh, from verse 18, the subtitle says, Jeremiah weeps for sinful Judah. Please uh, pay attention and try to understand what we are talking about. I'm talking about Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, talking about a man that spent over 40 years in ministering to the southern kingdom of Judah, and then toward the end of his ministration, or toward the end of one of the kings, the whole of Judah was carried away into Babylonian captivity. And all the things that he was saying, all this while for which he was persecuted and incarcerated, came to pass. But in this chapter, 
as his usual with him, was telling the people, warning them, saying, what kind of thing is this? Nobody is repenting. The things continue, continue in your sin, as if there be no punishment that was coming. And then after that, they had read the punishment that was coming. Then from verse 18, he began to weep. Jeremiah weeps for sinful Judah and then said, My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people ask. Is our king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished and the summer is gone. The people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the heart of my people. I get pained with the pain of my people. I mourn, and I'm overcome with grief. Now, he asks this idiomatic question. Is anybody listening to me? And I ask this kind of idiomatic question. Question like a a parabolic question. Permit me, excuse me if there is no such adjective. And then he said, Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing? for the wounds of my people. Is there no medicine there in Gilead? King James Version says, is there no balm in Gilead? For us to understand the implication, the inference, what that man was talking about, we need to know something about Gilead and I read what is known concerning Gilead. Let me pay attention wherever you are. Gilead is a large area east of River Jordan extending northward from the Dead Sea. If you go to the map of Israel, map of the land, Palestine, at the time of Jesus, a little prior to the time of Jesus, if you go to the Bible Atlas, you will see the Dead Sea somewhere here, and then, then you will see River Jordan springing up from the Dead Sea and going up, and then the whole land by the right, the east of it, is Gilead. And now, this Gilead was the area that was given to the tribes of Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh. Each one of them occupied part of Gilead. This region called Gilead was good grazing land and famous for its flocks and herds. Gilead was also famous for a gum or a spice. Listen. Gilead was famous for a gum, G-U-M, or spice, S-P-I-S-E, known as the balm of Gilead. This was used to heal wounds 
and also as a cosmetic. Gilead had this particular product in the land. And then it's called the balm of Gilead. It was used to heal wounds. And then the prophet, looking at the availability of uh, balm in Gilead, now began to ask in form of a metaphor, is now no balm in Gilead? Why are these people in this condition? Is it that they didn't have a God that would save them? Is it that they didn't have a merciful God that could forgive their sins if they repented or what? Why is it that despite the fact that there is a merciful God. I'm now interpreting, is there no balm in Gilead? Why is it that, despite the fact that there is a merciful God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that will forgive, the God that will restore, the God that will protect the people, why is it that the people are bound to be carried away why is it? So there is no God. So there is no God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob anymore. Why is it that these people are subjected, are going to be sub are subjected and are continuous, continuously subjected unto these uh, afflictions from the foreign country? And now, we now transfer that statement to the church. Listen to me. Do you know that Jesus Christ is a balm of Gilead? When you Talk about the balm of Gilead. It's a kind of metaphor. Metaphor is a phrase you use to describe something else. Jesus Christ is a balm of Gilead. And then the Spirit of God is asking us, why is it that there is so much lamentation why the crisis? Why the mourning? Why? Why the diseases? Why? Why the sorrows? Why? Why the pain and why the fear? And why is it that in the church today, even in the watchman, we are now living as if there be no balm in Gilead, as if there be no Jesus, as if the kingdom of God does not have what it takes to protect, what it takes to heal the sick, what it takes to sack demons from the possessed, what it takes to deliver people from ancestral, ancestral whatever, evil, that has been, that has been bequeathed them from their forebears. Listen to me. Somebody suffering from what his ancestors did and is in the church. In the present day, the people of God are running. I was discussing with somebody, a young man, and he said, that place where we live, the landlord is a very bad man. 
and that house very bad. So so person lived there and had two miscarriages. And when he left there, now the pregnancy stood. That could be true. The question is, no power in the church, no balm in Gilead, no fire, and no what in the blood of the lamb. The devil is now stronger. The devil is now having the upper hand and giving the people uppercuts and giving them technical knockouts. Is there no ban in Gilead? Is there no power in the church, in the kingdom of God? What do we know concerning Jesus? What do we know concerning Jesus? Jesus is the head of principalities and powers. Are you there? Is somebody listening to me? Jesus is the head of principalities and power. Jesus is above Amadio. Is anybody listening? The deities of your town or of your village. The Lord Jesus is above them. Those things by which some people are bragging and then they are wanting to afflict you, I said the Lord Jesus is above them. Is there no power in the church? We are asking. Answer the question. There is no power in the church. There is no anointing that breaks the yoke in the church. Jesus Christ does not carry healing virtue anymore. Can I show you something? When he came, when he came, I show you what is uh, written concerning him. In Matthew chapter 9, Matthew chapter 9. Reading from verse 18. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead. They come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood, twelve years, came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may touch the, his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole. In another rendering, listen to me, we are told in that account that Jesus was asking his disciples, who touched me? Because the woman came into the crowd and pushed her way in the crowd and touched the garment. And the Lord Jesus Christ was asking, who touched me? And apostles were asking, there are a lot of people here and they are thronging, and they're asking, who touched me? But he now said, virtue went out of me. Healing virtue went out of me. So Jesus Christ, embodiment of healing virtue, while he was here, filled with the Holy Spirit, and the Lord Jesus Christ that is in glory right now, is he less? Somebody to answer me. Is he less? Now, why the continuity of crying? Why cry every night? No bam in Gilead. 
Listen to me. I tell somebody there that is a child of God. If a child of God, if somebody is a child of God, may I ask you, does he have an endless of the spirit? Endless of the spirit means down payment, something that you, you give to show that you own this place. You made a down payment for a piece of land. And then that down payment shows that you own here. And then you went there and then built a little security house or a bungalow and let somebody stay there to show your presence. That's an earnest. Every child of God, listen to this, and this might save somebody. This might give a leeway to somebody. Yeah. What I'm going to say is going to do something in the life of people. In the previous lesson, in the previous meeting, I was asking who is senseless? And I asked the question again, who is senseless? Raise your hand. I asked again, who is a foul? You have a foul brain. Raise your hand. Nobody, which means you are sensible. You're understanding what I'm saying. I'm asking, does a child of God have the endless of the spirit? Yeah. Spirit of who? Spirit that is in who? Spirit that is in God. A portion of it is inside a child of God. And those people that are baptized with the Holy Spirit, then a larger portion, a baptismal portion, that is the volume, a bigger volume, is inside, inside the child of God. And that same spirit is in God. Can I then ask you this question? Is that person connected to God? Is that person connected to Jesus? And if that spirit is in the angels, is that person connected to the angels? These things are not fanciful talk. That's the reason the apostle writing to the Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 12 said, we have not come to the mount that may be touched. We are not connected to the mount that you can touch that was burning and that was earthquake and that was a sound of voices. We have come to Mount Zion, that is the city of the living God, the home of the living God. And we have come in connection with the innumerable company of angels and of the church of the firstborn. So, take note, if you be a child of God and you have the spirit of God, whether as an earnest or as in baptism, in baptism and measure, then... The spirit that is in you is the same spirit that is in God. And uh, listen to me, if you are allowing him prayer, pray through your mouth, then that spirit is praying and that same spirit, uh, that same spirit, the portion of that spirit is praying inside God. Because the same spirit Is the same spirit, the same Jesus, the same person, the same person that is coming again, the same person that attended to the people, the same person. Has he become, has he turned around and become daft, adamant, unconcerned? He doesn't care. He doesn't care this time around. He doesn't care in the 21st century. The problems of the 21st century have overwhelmed him. They have made him, they made him powerless. 
the science and technology of the first 21st century has dumped him and made him have made him senseless have incapacitated him the maneuvers of the devil in the 21st century has now incapacitated the master listen this is the appropriate time for him to show to show up listen to me this is the appropriate time for him to show up show his strength he showed in strength in the days of abraham he showed his strength in the days of old in the days of old listen to me the devil's oppression oppressions uh, we are not as terrible, as complicated as today. Today, many, many people, the dreams you dream are the dreams of eating with your grandfathers and great-grandfathers that had died 40, 50, 60, 100 years ago. These things, we are not there in time past. The enemy is now engaging, engaging us with a lot of sophistication. But now I'm asking you, there is no sophistication in Christ Jesus. Is there sophistication in Christ Jesus? Does the blood of Jesus Christ still speak? Is our power in the word of God? The word of God, does it have any restraint? Can it do something? As I'm speaking, can it do something in the UK? As I'm speaking, can you hear somebody in Canada? That's true. There is balm in Gilead. The people should not behave as if there be no balm in Gilead. Are you there? Don't behave as if there be no balm in Gilead. Don't let us live in this world and then pine away and become even worse than people that don't follow the law. And that is the fact that we are not the same before God. Those in the kingdom and those outside the kingdom are not the same. And those that are in the kingdom, there are segments, they are not the same. Power past power. Man past man. Man past man. Driver past driver. There are drivers. There are Christians, but Christian past Christian. Is anybody listening to me? There is power in the word. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of the Lamb speaketh better things than the blood that Abel shed. Did you hear me? Abel yes. shed the blood of animals and then the fat thereof and then he spoke good for him. Spoke forgiveness, spoke acceptance and now but in Hebrews we are told that the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than that of Abel. What then do you do? Come on, arouse yourself. Come on, take on faith. Come on, Go back to Christianity. The Christianity as to when you began. Christianity of the 70s. Christianity when you began to be a Christian. Not the Christianity of today. We must return to the Christianity of old. Because that is the Christianity that will go make the people go in the rapture. That is the Christianity that Restoration is talking about. The Christianity of faith. People that never said that. There is balm in Gilead. Rise up on your feet. There is balm in Gilead. There is power in the name of the Lord. There is power in the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is a strong word. It is your business to recognize there is balm in Gilead. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. There is power in prayer. Faith will still attract what it will attract.
Somebody must listen to me now. Somebody must listen to me now. Somebody must agree with me now. I think one year's time, in six months time, or when I see you, in six months time, in three months time, I do must be a better person. Yeah. Listen, Re refreshed. Refreshed. Are you hearing me? <laughs> Not haggard. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it real? Yeah. A man of God was asked recently, but you are 80 years. You know what he said? He said, 80 is a number. I'm not living by numbers, by the by number H. When I saw his picture, I was jubilating, thanking God. Fresh. Listen, there is Bam in Gilead. The vicissitudes of life have sort of eroded the faith that we used to manifest. But my Bible tells me in 1 Timothy chapter 6, fight the good fight of faith. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God. Mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. What weapons? Weapon of faith. Faith is a hook. Faith is a hook. Listen, I did something yesterday. I called one of our workers walking in the workshop. I have a coconut tree that is inside that place and it's very tall. And then the juice from the coconut is very sweet, and I want it. Did you, did you hear me? And I called him and said, go and make, go and make a, a wood, a long wood. At the end of this, fix a knife, sharp knife. And now he told me, I'm going to fix the one that is like, like this, with which you harvest wheat. I said, go and do that. He went and did it, and then and put a little ladder and brought down coconut. That's faith. Develop the hook of faith so that when you come back, we will not be looking like dead men. We will not be looking like people that are in the mortuary. Is it possible? Is it possible? Yes. There is balm in Gilead. There is faith still available and it's still working. Prayer works. Did you hear me? Yes. Prayer does what? Works. Argument works. If you make the argument like the woman of Canaan, that argument will work in 2022. If it worked in first century, it will work now. Now, this is the time it should work much more. Because the devils have doubled and tripled and quadrupled their efforts to bring us down. And if he has done all that to bring us down, what does the master do? The master will give him fire for fire. Attention for attention. But I am not speaking fanciful words. If you have a servant, and that servant is loyal, and then, listen to me, you send him on an errand, and then he went on that errand, and some enemies uh, confronted him, attacked him, 
and you came out and defended, and defended him. Now you sent him on another errand, and the stronger enemies come. You will develop stronger defense for that person. Please let us be reasonable. Is there anybody that is a fool here? Is there anybody that is a goat? We are sensible. This thing is real. Let's not hear that this person died, this person died, this person died. If all of us die, who will do the work? Are you there? This person died, this person died, this person died. Die, 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 die. And in the church, we are announcing burial of so so person, so so dead. Burial of so so person, so so dead. Why? No bomb in Gilead. There is bomb in Gilead. There is bomb in Gilead. There is power in the name of Jesus. This same Jesus that I called his name in times past and I didn't bother to know whether you be a native doctor. And then people are telling me there are wishes and wizards and living where I am living, I want to pack out. Pure nonsense. They wish to pack out for me. Are you there? He is the person that should pack out. I am not the person to pack out. How can I fear the juju person? How can I fear the juju person? I should not fear the juju person. I should not fear the medicine person. You should not be living by the, by, by the manipulation of the elements. There is bam in Gilead. Look to me and then the prophet, Jeremiah was asking, is there no bam in Gilead? Spices that heal? Is there no God in Israel? Why is Israel impoverished? Why are they going to be car carried away by Babylonia? Why are we being carried away by Babylonians? Why is it that the church of today is a church for people that are afraid? I'm asking. When I see you again, I want to see robust people. Amen. I want to see people that are alive. Amen. I want to see people that are healthy. Amen. Go and work on it. Simple and short. The prayer does not mean that you must jump and hit your head on this ceiling. Prayer is that you make your argument, you get hold of the word of God that says something. The word of God that says something. You get hold of the truth and tell the truth to the kingdoms. The devil hears truth. And there is nothing he can do when he hears the truth. The truth holds. Praise God. Praise God. Wait a minute. One principality, the kingdom of, uh, in that kingdom where Daniel was, Persia were led an angel that was sent to answer Gabriel and then they began some argument and then that angel the principality said even though I'm no more in the kingdom I am superior to you my authority has not been taken. You will not pass from here. I tell you, you can't pass here. Or go and deliver the message. You can't pass here. I am superior. I have a greater authority. You obey me. And then the angel, that angel, that principal he said, in the army where we were, you give me salute. So you can't pass here. That was truth. And that angel couldn't pass. He came from heaven. He said, this is truth. My authority over you has not been removed. I was above you. So you can't pass here. And then he delayed him, detained him. Then, but now, information reached the third heavens. And then, <laughs> praise God. 
Um, these things are not fanciful talk. They are meant to put insight into your mind that you may be a Christian. This last day requires it. And then and Michael came there and said, Grow out. Bow out. Move out. I have authority over all of you. Move out. Yes, and he moved out. Truth was walking. Satan knows truth. And when you present him with truth, you see, you don't have rule over me. I didn't join in the rebellion. You have no right even to attack me. In the first place, you are going beyond your boundary. And you come to somebody that is possessed, and you tell the Satan, this house does not belong to you. You are not meant to be here. This place is meant to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you tell the person that you are ministering to, can you please say, I want my body to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. Say it with all your heart. And then, then the person says it over and over again and believes it. And then you talk to the demon and say, did you hear what the person said? Now leave this place. Not, if you believe it, nothing will prevent him from leaving. If he doesn't leave that there, listen, that truth is going to force him on and on. And he will leave at the appropriate time. Listen to me. He will leave because truth works. God's word works. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Wait, wait, you'll be able to withstand all the dust and the, all the wild winds of the wicked one. Put on, and he said, the shield of faith and the spiritual sword of the spirit. The sword of the spirit, that is the sword that the spirit of God uses. Yes, and the spiritual sword the believer uses. Yes, what is it? The word of God. The word of God. There is balm in Gilead. I said there is balm in Gilead. The Christian is different from the unbeliever. The person that serves God is different. Listen to me. We are in the university. We are teaching the university. And then, and then, well, you are a professor. I am a professor. Professor of physics. This person is a professor of physics. Professor past professor. We are not the same. Are you there? We are not the same. We are doctors, but we are not the same. You don't know the God I know. You don't pray, I pray. The case you couldn't handle, I will handle it. Praise God. There is balm in Gilead. Well, I want to see you next time jubilating. I want to see you next time jumping. I want to see them everywhere. Of course, what do you call restoration? Restoration. Is it only restoration in the spiritual and then we are praying and then we are having love? That's not only it. Restoration is in... Praise God. Elijah was frustrated. Elijah was fagged out. Elijah was down and out. Elijah was no strength again. Elijah committed suicide of some sort. I want to die. And no strength inside him. But the Lord that knows that, that there is something that is ahead. And that same Lord knows that there is something that is ahead for us. Yes, Even the rapture is ahead. Yes, the time that the clock is ticking. And then he came to Elijah and said, what are you doing here, my friend? What are you doing here? <laughs> I have been very jealous, I know. You've been very jealous of the Lord, God. And then Israel has forsaken the Lord, thrown down your altar, and so what? And so what? You said truth, but what? Then you want to die here? No, sir. No. And then the angel came and gave him some food. Who cooked it? 
precious father. Listen to me. That same God that attended to Elijah. I don't understand how he will refuse to attend to me. I don't understand it. I don't understand. Now, so, there are, he is partial. Very partial. You attend to Elijah, and you give me work more than Elijah's work. And you don't attend to me. And then you want me to execute the, the, the project. Then you must be a wicked person. What are we talking about? There is Bam in Gilead. We are different people. I am not the same. Listen to me. I go to the village. They are dying. All my mess are finished. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? Younger people are dying. Many people are in the mortuary right as I'm talking. Wow. Wow. And then I think of myself. 78. About. Next, next July, 78. Ah, listen to me. All the people that God gave me the ministry with, do you know that many have died? But do you know my, God, my argument? I said, they have died, they've gone to heaven, no problem. But me, I no die. Why? I kept into the program. They left the program. None of them that God gave me the program with, none of them entered it, is inside it. None. This is not mockery. I said, thanks be to God. They went into places and worked for God. One was buried the other day. And then our head, in those days, saw me, 1993, 1995, there about and said, Lord Shoes, you are the only person that kept the vision that the Lord gave to us. Go ahead and God bless you. He's late now. He died when I was 60. And I said, Lord, the ones that are my children, two of them have died. I said, Lord, they have gone to heaven. But me, no die. Because I follow the something now. I follow the something. You treat me according to how I treated you. Praise God. As Bam in Gilead. God is the God of justice and judgment. We we'll serve Him for naught. We we'll die in accidents and, and then finish. Every watchman person die. God forbids. I don't want to hear die, 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 die anymore. Are you there? Don't, we don't, God doesn't want to hear it. You can take your time and say, listen to me. Who tells me? Which pastor tells me that you cannot arrange with your people and say, you see, we are no more going to bury any person. Listen to me. God in heaven, Satan, we are no more going to bury any person. No burial in 2022. Listen to me. And it will be so. It will be so. There is balm in Gilead. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of the Lamb. The weapons of our warfare are not kind of, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down stronghold, casting down imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought the obedience of Christ. The word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edges. So piercing through to dividing asunder of spirit and soul and body and the discerner of the intents of the, of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. What is that thing that is not manifest in the sight of God? What is that threat? What is that threat? What is that threat? Now, let me ask you. The spirit of God inside a person is a being, intelligible being. I've told you it's not electric current. Electric current doesn't have sense. Did you hear what I said? Yes, Mechanical energy doesn't have sense. Heat energy doesn't have sense. They do work according to the regulations. It's not a robot. Robot really doesn't have sense. 
The sense of the robot is the sense of who created it. Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. It is when you press this button that it will make like this. If you didn't press the button, it will not make like that. It is the sense of who created it. And so, the spirit of God is not a robot. He is not a human being. He is the spirit of the living God. And he knows if it's inside you, it can stop it can make the thing that wants to grow. Okay, why did uh, people are talking that because they don't buy from what I'm saying? Why did God say to me that cancer will not grow? Did He say that cancer did not uh, did not germinate? He said it will not do what. Something can germinate now, but come and grow now. <laughs> And every day I am telling the Lord, the spirit of the Lord that is inside me is an intelligible being and he knows how to quench it. Yes. Pour hot water on it. Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Go ahead and do those things that are real. Yes, I am not talking jargon. Yes, I'm not talking rubbish. I'm not a stupid man. Are you there? Yes, I don't engage in things that have no meaning from childhood. Are you there? I don't engage in nonsensical things. Listen, you can, you can be alive 20, that is 2022, 20, you didn't go to hospital. Ah, they didn't agree. They didn't agree. You can ask the Lord for wisdom in order to know what to eat. You know what? And if you are a Christian and my child, you need to do what? You need to follow me. Do you know that this other day when we went home, that day that we closed late, I didn't know that it was already two o'clock. And when I reached home, you know what I said? I didn't know it was late. Then I saw some stew. And then I said, the thing was having some aroma. (laughs) And then I said, boil me some rice. And they boiled the rice. And I ate the something. And I went to bed. And then as I lay down, shortly I woke up. And then the cough, the cough, it was like my lungs were breaking. Oh my God. Oh my God. Constantly, constantly. My wife woke up. Jesus. Oh my God. You know what I did? I went to the toilet. I said, Lord, forgive my stupidity. I'm an idiot. Who told me to eat? At 3 a.m. I wasn't hungry. I began to confess my sin. Listen to me. After the confession, everything went away. For you. For you, you don't have any humility to confess your sin. And then you say, but I, I, I ate food now. Children, I eat food. Were you hungry? I told the Lord I wasn't hungry. This is a, 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 a loco. <laughs> and when I finished the prayer in the toilet, everything went away. And I was here. The thing was pushing up. So learn that. Learn some wisdom. If you make a mistake, you eat and eat and eat until your stomach is now bursting. And then you are poaching. Go and confess your sin. <laughs> Let God help you to, uh, to use everything that is available in order that we may live long. There is, uh, there is water. Go on and pray. Go on and pray. And go home. Go on and pray. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. There is power mighty in the blood of Jesus Christ. 
There is power mighty in the blood. In the blood. There is power mighty in the blood. And there, there is, is power mighty in, in the blood. And there, there is, is power, power mighty in, in the blood of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. There, there is power, power mighty in, in the blood. Unto Jesus be your glory and honor and praise, Majesty, a kingdom authority. Throw from his throne and unto his own, his anthem raised. So exalt, I lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify, come glorify Christ Jesus the King, Majesty, worship His Majesty, Jesus who died. But now glorify King of all kings. I foresee a situation in the which people from the places are gathering and they are jubilating. And I see it ahead of time. And the Lord is the one that is working it out. Because uh, his word that has gone out has entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth and is recorded. I want to show you something that you must take note of. As I read from Acts of Apostle chapter 10, verses 1 to 4. Listen to this and take note of it. And go and do what you should do. And do it in faith. And be steadfast, consistent. Develop that faith this night. A faith based on the fact that there is balm in Gilead. Acts 10. Verse 1 to 5. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. A devout man, a religious man, a godly man. And one that feared God with all his house, meaning a skilled devil because of the fear of God, which gave much arms to the people, philanthropists, doing good and helping the people, and prayed to God 
always prayer warrior. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers, hallelujah, thy prayers and thy arms are come up for a memorial before God. Go away here from here and develop faith, prayer, prowess, arguments with the scriptures. You don't need to jump. You don't need to hit yourself on the ground. You don't need to cry. You don't need to exact a lot of energy in order for God to hear you. Listen to me. While you are on your bed and you are praying, soliloquizing, and praying in your mind, remember that he said, when you want to pray, you enter your room and shut the door behind you and pray to God that sees in secret. And he that sees in secret will reward you openly. If you muttered something like Hannah did, he will hear you. Make that argument. Use that argument. Use what you know. It's bam in Gilead. There is power in the word of God. The word of God works wonders. The spirit of God inside me knows what is happening in my intestine and can stop any growth. And you ask him to stop the growth. And stand there with faith. And on and on, until the things that we are saying and the arguments have become a monument that cannot be neglected. As how to be a Christian in the present day of terribleness at the hand of Satan and overcome. There is bam in Gilead. Jesus is coming for a church, not a fearful church, not a cowardly church, but a vibrant church. I bet you that. Let's stand up. I sing song number 82. Want to sing harmoniously. And we pray with it. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love. Heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is out to prove my Savior lives because he lives. I confess tomorrow. Because he lives, no fear is gone. And because I know who he holds the future, and life is what the living just because he lives. I swear to hold. A newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives a bad greater still and the come assurance a shy confess on certain days 
And because he lives And because he lives I confess tomorrow Because he lives More fear is gone And because I know Oh, he holds the future And life is what the living just Because he lives And then one day I'll cross the river I'll fight my fight And I'll war with pain And then as death Against way to victory I'll see the light Oh glory and I know he lives he Because he lives I confess tomorrow Because he lives No fear is gone And because I know Oh And life is what the living just because he lives. Open your mouth. Remember what you have heard. Think of what to engage in. On a continual basis. Great Father in heaven, I commend your people unto thee. Hallelujah. Thank you, our Father and our God. Who has believed our report? And unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? The arm of the Lord revealed unto them that believe your word and practice them. Surely the arm of the Lord must be revealed and revealed unto them. There after their grandfather in heaven. Somebody must have the arm of the Lord reveal on him. Some woman, some man, precious father. Things must not be the same again as we go away from the house of the Lord. They don't worship the Lord in vain. There is a difference between Egypt and Israel. Between them that worship thee not and them that worship thee. Between them that kneel in prayer and them that don't kneel in prayer. Between them that fear the Lord and them that do not fear the Lord. They are not the same. Precious Father in heaven, we are not the same. I'm asking, great Father in heaven, ten a rock of ages, that from this hour, Lord in glory, the visitation that these people will receive in their dreams are the visitation of the angels, not the angels of darkness, but the angels of light. The dreams must be the dreams that are packaged in the third heavens, heavenly Jerusalem, not the dreams are packaged in the kingdom of darkness. The dream that destabilizes. Lord, I pray all such people that born under the mesmerization and under the heart of the wicked one, and who have come to know and believe that there is balm in Gilead, that God is alive, 
and we have put down some standing provision for us. He has asked us to ask, and that we shall be given. He has asked us to knock, and it shall be opened unto us, and we are doing that. All such people that know that righteousness exalts a man, a woman, a boy, a nation, a city, a family, and they are keeping to it. Lord, and let them be different from other people. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the next six months, let I be, let I be changed. Let that be different testimonies. Let the church be a different thing altogether. When we visit locations, let, let us see people are running and saying, Daddy, come and see what has happened. Let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ. It ought to be like that. Great Father in heaven, Simeon was old. Elizabeth was old. Well stricken in years. But you answered their prayer. And they had a child. Thank you very much. And all that had and had information concerning the child rejoiced with Elizabeth. Lord, the same thing with Sarah. We thank you. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our Lord, the God of the watchmen. The God of all his people. Follow your people. Follow them on their journeys. Follow them everywhere. Follow them in the towns. Follow them as they travel. Because we have what it takes to reach our destination. We have what it takes to give a technical knockout unto all our enemies. May they learn and may they be provided with inspiration and insight and faith in order to be able to give technical knockout unto their enemies. Uppercuts that the enemies can never be able to defend. Thank you for answer to prayers. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning and is now and forever and ever shall be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.